Okay, this is a little late in response, but the issue is ongoing, and I know that uh, I think it was Larry Gerke who, or either Pinochet, one of my regular uh, viewers who has been <coughs> asking, you know, why, why don't you talk about Florida? Uh, I haven't been available since uh, Thursday night, so I have been watching it, but I have been at work and things like that. So the <coughs> what we're talking about here, the person who's who's to blame for this, even though I would say that he's duly elected the senator from Florida, but the person who is to blame here for what's going on in Florida is none other than <coughs> Florida Governor Rick Scott. <coughs> because you can see right here, this is from this is from uh, Tim Canova. Tim Canova, who is one of the few progressives that I've I've told people over and over again that. You know, progressive, yes, pro-abortion, yes, uh, really, I mean, I, I don't agree with his policies. I think he's a very competent person, uh, not, not really one of those, uh, you know, ridiculous uh, red-haired feminist types. Obviously, you can see he looks more like Lex Luthor, but Tim Canova is, in my opinion, the most, uh, you know, ignored person who could have caused some political change in Florida. But instead, because of the unwillingness of the Florida government, including uh, including uh, Rick Scott, who, who has been the governor there for eight years, didn't clean up the election system there. It's an election system that has now bit him in the ass. And instead of really addressing this is this is the problem. OK, a lot of people want to get along and say, well, at least we have a Republican governor. Uh, I mean, it could be worse. It could be that we're run by somebody who is, uh, you know, a total, uh, you know, corrupt, disgusting beast of the establishment like Andrew Cuomo. No, having a Republican governor is not enough. Ha voting for Republican is not enough. Uh, actually, uh, belonging to any of these so-called organizations that like the NRA and, and uh, th that's not enough. You, you have to pressure these people who are elected to public office to actually uh, fulfill their mandate and clean up the stables of corruption that are uh, just ruining everything about the governments that, that we elect. It's, it's ridiculous. And it said, this is his uh, article in the Florida Sun Sentinel. He says, for two years, I've been warning that the Broward Supervisor of Elections Office is a swamp of corruption. I've been urging Governor Rick Scott to fire Supervisor Brenda Snipes, clean out the office, and start criminal investigations. I'm sure Governor Scott now wishes he, he had heeded those warnings. <laughs> Do tell. In 2016, I took a leave of absence from Nova Southeastern University, where I am a tenured law professor, to run for Congress in a Democratic primary debate against Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz. After a loss by about 13 percentage points, I sought to inspect the ballots to verify the vote as permitted under Florida's public records law. Unfortunately, Snipes stonewalled my request for months, and I was forced to file a lawsuit in mid-2017. Earlier, <coughs> earlier this year, Snipes admitted in a sworn videotape deposition that she had destroyed all the paper ballots. Several months later, the Florida Circuit Court granted me summary judgment and found that Snipes had violated numerous state and federal statutes, including some punishable as felonies with up to five years in prison. Snipes has claimed that there was no harm to the public because we could inspect the digital scanned images of the ballots. But there's no way to inspect the software of the electronic voting machines that create those scanned ballot images. <coughs> the software is proprietary. The private property of the software vendor is hired by the supervisor. Why would anyone run for office or even vote while we have this awful system of black box voting with electronic vo voting machines that are inherently susceptible to hacking and software manipulation? I've come to believe the only way to have fair elections is to move to a system of 100% hand-marked paper ballots that are counted by hand in public by nonpartisan and transpartisan teams of citizens. Uh, I want to say here before I continue. For a long time, I didn't know where to stand on this issue. It's, it's very difficult. I don't know always that paper ballots is a good idea because you can also, it's easy, it's easy to fuck with that system because you can just slip in more ballots and shit like that. It's, it's not, 
you know, I think that there are flaws with that system. And, and really, the issue is that people, what, what I think is the issue is that you cannot have electoral officials, electoral officials, in my opinion, if they have any political involvement, I think they have to recuse themselves and, and just, uh, you, you know, not be involved. I think that, that it's, it's a mistake that they had snipes in that position to begin with. <clears throat> Both before and after the court ruled against Snipes, I warned that if she were kept in office, there would be more official misconduct in elections. None of our law enforcement agencies, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the Florida Attorney General, or the U.S. Attorney <coughs> for South Florida were interested in starting criminal investigations. This is important because the Florida Attorney General is Pam Bondi, who is being considered for Attorney General of the USA. And if you know, what, what Canova is saying is true. So it is, I'm not saying if. What Canova is saying is true. And I would say that instead of appointing somebody who is known for turning, you know, the other cheek to all this bullshit that's going on, you need someone who, who's really a spark plug and a, and a hardcore, uh, you know, I, I wish it, Trey Gowdy would have been the person to do this, but uh, apparently, from what I've heard, he's burnt out and not willing to get back into the ring on this. Um, after Democratic Party leaders failed to support any investigation, I decided to leave the party and run again as a no party affiliation and independent candidate. By the way, I endorsed his candidacy. Not that it matters because, you know, it's just me. I was very clear that I did not expect a fair election and that Snipes would likely try to punish me by rigging the election again. I want to use the campaign to expose as much of the corruption in our elections as possible. My recent campaign as an independent caught fire in the final weeks. We saw an upsurge in support when a Republican news outlet reported on a Republican poll that showed us in a dead heat with Wasserman Schultz and the Republican candidate far behind. In early voting, we saw an upsurge of new voters, especially young voters who don't normally participate in midterm elections. Hundreds of volunteers stepped up. Canvassers were knocking on 5,000 doors a day by the end. We had volunteers at almost every early voting site and election day site where we witnessed a steady stream of voters from across the political spectrum breaking our way. On election night, Snipes office reported that I had received less than 5% of the vote. A vote tally so low, it's absolutely ludicrous. Somehow we're supposed to believe that I got half the number of votes in a general election than I received in a closed primary and at a time when my name recognition was so much higher than two years ago. Today, everyone is particularly acutely aware of the problems in Snipes' office. Both parties in Florida are responsible for this election nightmare. Neither was willing to stand up for the rule of law. Democrats took no heed when Snipes was photographed campaigning with Wasserman Schultz barely a week before the recent election. They should not be surprised that Republicans now suspect a rigged election. I think that, you know, fuck this whole Republican-Democrat thing. That office is completely, completely bereft of any responsibility the fact that that doug uh, doug scott uh rick scott let this happen you know if he if he ends up getting uh you know cheated out of this and what's his name uh bill nelson returns to the senate what, what are we supposed to say okay you had the chance to clean this up and you didn't what the fuck Unfortunately, nobody seems to care about election rigging until it happens to them, but this problem is bigger than any candidate. It should concern all of us as Americans. Sadly, I no longer trust any election results reported in Broward County. There needs to be an investigation of every election that's taken place here. I call on Governor Scott to do what he should have done many months ago, immediately fire Brenda Snipes and replace her with someone with integrity who is more interested in fair elections than in favoring particular candidates or, or parties. So I want I want to say another thing. There are people, okay, um, let's see here, Progressive Soapbox, for example, is this guy, and um, he he's he's completely fine when what's it called. He he want he wants uh what's his name Gillum Andrew Gillum the guy who stabbed him in the back the guy who stabbed him in the back and uh, went and gave <coughs> you know g gave a handshake to Debbie Wasserman Schultz says judge rules in favor in Rick Scott's favor orders immediately ba immediate ballot inspection 
Um, then we have So he's also supporting Barbara Lee for House Speaker. But he, he's been supporting for, for days. He's been supporting Andrew Gillum on, on this. And he's been saying that the issue is that the Democrats always concede when they should demand that the votes be counted all the way till the end. Okay, so that, that's that's an interesting position. That's an interesting position. Because the fact is that the Democrats have constantly claimed that there is voter suppression and that you, you can't clean up, you know, the, that any effort to clean up the rolls and, and get rid of dead people on the ballot and things like that, those, those are issues that they, they call voter suppression. Those are issues that they consider to be, here, here it is, so... Hoisted on their own petard. That's what I'm calling this. Hoisted on their own petard. Two things, two main things about this, and I'm talking about the race with Andrew Gillum. Um, Gillum runs against DeSantis. On Tuesday night, I watch with bated breath to figure out the outcome of that particular election, and we find Gillum conceding, but conceded too soon. Because Deborah Walsman Schultz, her woman on the field, Brenda Snipes, comes out and says, we're not finished counting. And this is a Democratic district. And we have found thousands and thousands and thousands more votes. So many more votes. It looks like it is going to be in between the margins where they need to force a recount. It's not done. Now, when Tim Canova ran in that race with Deborah Walsman Schultz, Democrat v. Democrat, um, and Brenda Snipes had destroyed the ballots, nobody cared. Nobody gave a shit that the ballots were being destroyed. Not one person cared. So maybe I'm wrong on this. And a judge said that she broke the law. Did anything take place? Nope. Was she still manning the fort when this election took place? Yep. And now that Rick Scott's ass is on the line and that the Republican governorship is on the line. Now Rick Scott wants an investigation. Now Rick Scott wants to take her to court when before Rick Scott didn't give a shit. Isn't justice fucking sweet? God, I hope that both Nelson and um, um, Gillum wins that race. And I want Gillum to win that race and Nelson to win that race because when they had the opportunity to do something about it, and they didn't want to look. They didn't want to check. We didn't care. Under George V. Bush, George W. Bush versus Al Gore. Again, same thing. Shenanigans in Florida. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. And now all of a sudden, Rick Scott is concerned. Rick Scott is concerned because his ass is on the line. So I might, I might have uh, misstated his position, so I, I apologize to, to Jamal. But he, he is saying some, something similar to what I'm saying, but with a different conclusion. He's saying, well, because they didn't, they didn't uh, try to prosecute or remove Brenda Snipes at the time, that Gillum and uh, Nelson deserve to go back to the Senate, or, or that maybe, maybe he's looking at it as poetic justice. I don't see it as such. I think it's, it's really... It's a disgrace. I think that the fact is uh, Ron DeSantis doesn't deserve to lose his race. It, it was really Andrew Gillum who uh, fucked his own race up. He, he, he ran a race that was based on uh, basically any question about his corruption and his lying and, and his different positions that he keeps changing. That was racism and people were pursuing him because he's a black man. So I, I would say this, OK? Neither of those races should have been headed to a recount. The person who is to blame, which is where I agree with Jamal Thomas, is absolutely, absolutely Rick Scott for not dealing with this at the time when he could have. Uh, even Tim Black here, who's another uh, YouTube progressive, says, someone please explain how an incompetent public service such as, Bre servant, such as Brenda Snipes avoids termination after single-handedly polluting not one but two elections Get the hell out. People lose jobs over bad tweets. 
And and a lot of people are, are just uh, agreeing with him. And, and I would say this, okay? What would, for those people who are progressive, I think, I think some of them will agree with me. Some of them will, will probably ignore what I'm saying right now, but who cares? Okay, Tim Canova, I've never, ever, ever told people not to support him. I've, I've always supported his cause of, of, well, of getting elected, I guess, because I think that he's, he's a huge step up from the Democratic uh, establishment. Whatever side of the aisle you're on, I, th I think he would be a good representative for whoever is uh, living in that district of Florida. Okay, the uh, but if you're standing up right now and trying to say, well, we need Andrew Gillum in, we need uh, Bill Nelson in, what are you talking about? Th those people are the same, they're part of the same apparatus that has kept people <coughs> basically excluded <coughs> from from um from from changing the political system as there is <coughs> as there's always been this is this is an issue that i think it shows why loyalty to a to a party line is really a problem okay uh bill nelson has not been an extraordinary senator in in the 12 years he he has been in office what would progressives gain from him having a seat in the senate that's already controlled by the Republicans. Well, well, you could argue that it makes the it makes taking the majority a lot more easy in 2020. If you're a Democrat, that that's a that's a possibility. What did they gain from Andrew Gillum winning the governorship? Well, <coughs> the fact is that Andrew Gillum would probably gerryman he would probably help gerrymander the districts in Florida back towards a favorable Democratic position which, you know, they, they would they would find beneficial to themselves. But what what help does that give you if you're not able to actually elect people that are progressive like you to those positions? And, and then ultimately, the fact is that in Florida politics, the, the same way it is in much of the rest of the country, these people who are elected as progressives and run as progressives and talk talk about themselves as progressives, once they get into office, they become completely different animals. They might publicly promote the same progressive bullshit that they did before, but they end up selling out to the swamp, just like the rest of the, the political system. We, we do need, I believe, more parties in the country, in Florida, in where I live in Ohio, and really be, begin creating a democracy where every vote uh, goes to the person that represents the, per, the, the person casting it, rather than uh, fighting over which clerk is doing the right thing and which fucking ballot goes in the right box and whatever. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, that's about it. Uh, please like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my other channel, Razor Ray Live Wounds. Also, please uh, comment when it uploads and share the video and contribute to the Patreon, which is below, if you would like more news like this. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you very much.